Boss fight, the final light. Is this a story about my life? <laughs> I don't know. Be able to hit, you with everything. hit him with everything, mob. Power. So much build up for this. Maybe leave out the rage part a little bit, but no, that won't be the final assessment. Got a little bit of an avatar final boss fight to this. Using the rocks. Watch this end with mob energy bending him. He could take his powers, that's been established. <laughs> yeah, laughs normally. As a normal person does. Damn. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's gonna be a huge relief. Like, he's fighting so hard all this time to keep it all in. On a totally different level. Yes, that much has been made clear. <laughs> Deep down, you're the same as me. That's not wrong. It's just what Mob chooses to do with it that's different. We are freer than anyone else in the world. <laughs> yeah, but what do you do with that freedom? Rizzo had to just come and spoil all the fun. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, how could I be so foolish? This is not the time to have this existential battle. I let this power control me. Very interesting. And actually, that plays to the boss's point. That's part of his deal, right? He's more powerful because he has no attachments. There's a pattern or maybe like a fractal in the themes of these shows where the characters, Mob being the best example, benefit from letting go of easy wins, you know, or temptations, trusting in themselves to get through that and get to something better. And I think it is true that going for things that are great, anything that's great, including and maybe especially the search for oneself, is going to create vulnerabilities. And the question is sort of like, how strong is your character? Can you summon the strength through just sheer faith and will to emerge out the other side and grapple with these things and get the insight through truth, which I think is represented by Mob's honest expression, as Reagan alluded to last episode, and get something that is actually special, not for the label or the title or for one's ego, but because that is something like the deepest meaning a human can experience. It's the strongest and most realized state, and it requires suffering. And it means doing more things. It's sort of like in Demon Slayer, where Tanjiro and Kuro and the Hashira have a tougher fight because they haven't given up their humanity. So this guy is right, but then what's going to make Mob great is that he's going to do it all. He's going to be a great person and not sacrifice elements of himself that make him beautiful. And and he's gonna win and I think that's the ideal and I think it's possible even though it's insanely difficult and is I think rarely seen you're so emotionally unstable at this rate you'll never catch up to me no matter how far you go to do so yeah he sees it as a weakness the in the world you've told us <laughs> many times you were just unlucky that's all sympathy for his enemies you're joking right there's no one you can't see it that way yeah, that's right that's his value system at least it's a 50 percent then it wasn't luck that you were missing. It was bonds. You lived in total solitude. I know how that feels. Everyone else is just an extra. It took two very different paths out of that. Why are you crying? I really don't want to hurt you. <laughs> Aww. He's a good boy. All the way through the finale. Also, the confidence of that statement. <laughs> like, at this moment. I feel like the others should get a little farther back. They're too close. <laughs> that was a beautiful shot. <laughs> Reagan said it. President's aura has suddenly vanished. Does that mean it's finally over? Or did he just give up the last part of his humanity? My dad's aura didn't disappear. It only changed. Yeah, makes sense. He was sort of hanging by a thread. He also has another side, not unlike Mob. Can't even see him. And he hit him with the building ball. That's for good measure. This is completely Run, you fools. <laughs> How can one man's powers be so incredibly immense? Then run. You're not responsible for any of this. Trust in your boy, Mob. Mob? Or get in there and throw some salt at him. Open your eyes! No, I'm done. Oh, what? I don't have what it takes to show you a new path to follow in life. Sorry. Ah! You're the one who awakened these destructive impulses! That reminds me of Kung Fu Hustle. Wait, what just happened? I hoped you could turn over another oh, no. person. Oh my god. Damn, Mom. <laughs> Each other quite a bit. At this point, we both lose. So I'm gonna twist you like a sock. When you need to get all the water out of your clothing. Mom, no! He's losing himself. What's up, Shigeo? Hey, bro. Hey, friend flashback. Well this is gonna be a long one. Oh, okay. No, this is Couldn't cover everyone. No time. Come close to the fear of losing all I have. 
I understand exactly why Mob cried. I feel like a lot of shows cover the idea of victimhood through fate. You know, like you're just sort of a uh, slave to your circumstances. And I think everyone probably agrees that's true, but we differ as to to what extent we believe that's true. I think it's true that there are certain things that will never be our choice. I mean, almost nothing is a choice. But crucially, I think, in terms of the significance of what we can control, we're pretty lucky in the sense that we can think and act. Because when it comes down to having this kind of insight and being this kind of person and connecting deeply to one's life and gaining the satisfaction, for lack of a better word, in owns one life is, I believe, fully in just about everyone's grasp. And the luck factor will be whether or not people get what they need to internalize that that lesson. Actions are a little bit more clear and obvious in that regard. Emotions are trickier because they come from deeper down in the subconscious and they seem to appear out of nowhere. But emotions may not be controllable in any given moment, but they are trainable. You know, it's just like how you can't one day wake up and decide to do 100 push-ups, but you can train to do 100 push-ups and then one day you can decide to do 100 push-ups. If you become more aware of your emotions and aware of when they arise and perhaps why they arise and you practice reacting to them in a way that feels better, you will eventually get a better handle on them. People who can't see the choice are the ones that can sort of never get in a place to make choices at all. And part of the tragedy of it is that you can't give that to someone if it's not something they want to receive. There are situations where you can only watch. I'm sure everyone's had that experience like you see someone and you've been where they are and you know how terrible it is and you know you have insight for them but they're not in a place where they can understand it yet. And speaking of choice, in that situation you have none except for just being there and loving them. And there's both a beauty and like a poignant sadness in that, you know, watching them and understanding people and loving them despite their faults because you understand that that's you too. That's you. You were there and you could still be there. You could have still ended up there. And there's something existentially terrifying about that because if that's true, it immediately demands a higher level of responsibility in how we look at other people and how we treat other people. It's scary to be disarmed of weapons like anger and hatred and judgment, but I think that ends up being just another one of these tricks that someone of the, the characters fall into. It's sort of a false friend of identity. But Mob is so grounded, he understands others as a reflection of understanding himself and fearing who he could be. And he can appreciate everyone for where they are. And I think it's part of what makes his bond so special. Ooh, this music is beautiful. He turned into uh, Nicolas Cage on a motorcycle. <laughs> Yeah, he's carrying the Body Improvement Club with him. This fight, not disappointing on the visuals. Oh, his little hands. <laughs> Still got his tie intact, I see. But I uh, just had to lose the underwear, I guess. If something like that makes it outside, it might. This guy, for one, is not in control of his emotions. <laughs> Speaking of which. I think it's gonna explode. Yeah, everyone, everyone! needs to. Yeah, leave. That's what I'm saying. I'm telling you guys. Master, you need to run. Ooh, the sh shoe is on the other foot now. It's okay to run, Reagan. Leave it to me, the adult middle schooler. All right. I think we need to get out of here. We're gonna. Get <laughs> they became such bros in just a couple episodes, even though he burned his whole house down. Where's she go? He's not the running type. You have to sever the energy source before the explosion happens by putting an end to my life. Did I just see what I think I saw? <laughs> Wait, what Weird. are you doing? Containing the explosion. Is this self-sacrifice? I may have powers, but they don't fix everything. And honestly, it's not that since the beginning. Oh. Sabomi, are you watching this? <laughs> Do we got a live feed somewhere? I hope someone's taking a video. Although, because I know how middle school students are, I feel like Sabomi could see all this and still go for the high school guy with the cool haircut when you're older than her because he's so mysterious. I still have a choice, and I control my own destiny. Speaking of choice. I get to be the protagonist. It's my life. You have it. it the j job is yours. <laughs> I can't just leave you here to suffer on your own. That would be too sad. What are you planning to do with that filthy Melted cat? Melted him away. Oh, come on now. Oh, sympathy flashback. It's happening. Ooh, he had a wife. What happened to her? to grow up watching you. Attack on Titan vibes. You can't control people's hearts with psychic powers. You're wrong. True power is absolute. And as long as I have it, people will believe in me. Maybe some, but not everyone. Fear is not the same thing as belief. Goodbye. Oh, that's just you controlling everything. You sold something if I pretty big. Absorb it, don't do it. You'll only end up. I believe in mob. You have to. The same goes for me. I need to tell someone how I feel about the. <laughs> All friends <are> <laughs> Hey, whatever gets you up in the morning and saving the world from energy blasts. I feel like it's one of those things where because he's so beautiful, because he's so pure, he can handle that kind of darkness. He can go as deep as he has to and 
Get out unscathed. Hey, someone's recording! I take a video. Nice, nice photo though. Shigeo! Brother, please! Are you guys alright? He's coming around. Let's <laughs> Interesting that he ended up in there. I'm just back to his normal, quiet, humble self. Every one of our wounds had been healed. Our clothes are in shambles, though. Huh. Yeah, you're right. What's up with that? Did he do that? Pretty bold fashion statement, kid. He got stabbed with energy. I was sure Ground Zero would have been totally eviscerated. There's something we haven't seen, something we didn't that? see. Don't worry, I'm okay. No broken bones or anything. Sort of a miracle. In that case, let me carry you a bit. Aw, you get some sweet. <laughs> Why don't you guys crash at my place? It'll be cramped, but I'm sure we can make it work. Jeez, what's with the face? I'm just trying to help. I mean, I'm, I'm pumped. Stop! Uh, hey, Captain. I think I just peed a little. <laughs> You're Keep yourself from me. awe. I stopped by to grab some dumbbells. Well, I can't see anyone at this hour. It's a nighttime dumbbell grab, as we do. The Body Improvement Club will now start a three-day, four-night strengthening health training camp. He was looking for any excuse, wasn't he? There's enough room for all of you over at my granny's house. You'll need to gather and make your own food, so it'll be excellent training. And it's just a 90-minute jog away. <laughs> oh, that's it. All right, that's great. We all, we love running on this channel. You guys take care, okay? I mean, I think oh, this is an improvement. I'm gonna take a cab home. Oh, I want Reagan to go too. I'm getting very invested in this sleepover. You should have gone over to Reagan's place. Oh yeah, his house too. Huh, I wonder how that went down. I wonder if we're gonna find out. My guess is that the guy had a change of heart at the end and helped Mob survive. This is just such a rich episode. It's such a rich show in general, but the finale really paying off. Speaking of patterns, I was thinking just today that there's a big one that comes up a lot for me where it's like, a lot of times to get what you want, you have to do the impossible task of not wanting it and reaching for higher things. Like, it is undeniable, in my opinion, that Mob is special, but it has nothing to do at all with him seeing himself as special or desiring to see himself as special. Maybe that's just something that exists across all comparative personality assessments. Like, to be someone who is transcendent you have to do transcendent things you know you can't really fake it the the name or the label doesn't really matter and that is very difficult and so by nature it's going to be very rare part of the great and beautiful irony for lack of a better word of mob is that he is the protagonist despite not at all aiming to be the protagonist the boss leaned all the way into his powers but on that assessment of him as a person he also sacrificed things that other people would know better than to sacrifice and so it's sort of a net loss in total. And so he's special only in his talent. You know, he's not special in a protagonist sort of way, he's sort of well-rounded and strong and reasoned and good. My hope and suspicion is that in his final, perhaps, moments, the boss saw that and did something good. Uh, is that what I think it is? They say seeing is believing, but honestly, Giant I still don't believe it. Tree? Isn't it obvious? Aliens! This is the one! Of course. Of it's, it's broccoli. Awesome. The broccoli was foreshadowed since season one. Giant vegetable. It's a little too late, to call me. Got mob written all over it. Hey, there you go. There's a real fan. That's incredible. Even looks like his haircut. If you're asking if we were directly involved, I guess I'd have to say no. I mean, we basically were, though. Nah, you did your part. It's okay. There might end up being even more of these misguided people who misuse their powers. I can't support what you're doing, and I think you should stop. Honestly, we're really not that remarkable. <laughs> not true. Are you sure, kids? The twins just became even more remarkable. But to be honest, my favorite part of all this. It's just spending time with you. <laughs> this is so wholesome. You all wouldn't mind Not a shame to say that I love it. A while as friends, would you? I don't think it would be the end of the world if they kept developing their powers. You're really gonna ask him? Yes, I'm hoping Master Reagan will allow me to study under him. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Another protege. You can do a lot worse. She's right. I mean, you Back are to kind of boring. Basically can't do better. Oh, Serizawa. Listen, people are going to try to manipulate you because of your lack of self-confidence. Make sure you don't let them. That was nice. I was hoping you'd have the opportunity to see your mother again and reconnect with her. This is amazing. Believe it or not, she's always asking me how you're doing. It's too bad. Really is wish there I hope? Stopped you before she found Boss out Giovanni? She said she'd come see you sometime. It's a long road. Gary believes, though. <laughs> Shaking hands with the people. Past mob, better late than never. It's hard to put into words how much I love it and how beautiful I think it is that all these people are so great, but they all sort of come away with the same kind of humble outlook that, you know, yeah, we were we were there. You know, they all were incredible. And it's funny too, you know, I, I think there's a lot of focus on being number one, being the best, but I 
I actually feel that for just about everyone, there's a much lower ceiling on what you can experience in that direction than it might appear. Like as an onlooker, mob is just the ultimate badass. But being them, it feels great just to have been there and done your part and feel like you did good. I think if you hit that spot correctly, where it's just a great thing and you feel like, wow, I really met myself. You know, I really met my own expectations or standards and maybe I actually did some good. It ceases to be a competition and ends up being sort of a binary thing where you either have it or you don't. And if you have it, it's it's just as good as anything else. Comparisons in general and the associated jealousy, I think, pretty much always come from insecurity of a kind. And if that insecurity is dealt with in a satisfying way, the comparison becomes way less relevant. And I think it also helps to know that being in a number one spot or being in a top spot doesn't even guarantee that feeling. It doesn't guarantee the feeling that one is doing good or one is meeting oneself. There are a lot of people at the top for whom the top is empty. I think that's pretty clear. And I really like thinking about it that way because it gives a much more tangible and achievable goal, which is something like to identify one's own standards and then to show up and meet those standards, whatever they may be. You know, I think meeting your own expectations is pretty much all the way there, even though that too is difficult. So it was only a short circuit? Oh, he got his office back. The insurance wires. paid up. Since that's what started the fire, the insurance kicked in and bam, new office. Back to normal. Imagine this Good king morning, of thanks. the espers being asked to use his powers in these mundane ways. That's where I put those broccoli, the broccoli seeds. The broccoli seeds. Yeah, the broccoli was foreshadowed. Broccoli, huh? Mob also ended up Master, ending world hunger. That's... We all eat broccoli from now on. My broccoli. Thanks for the other day, Kageyama. What's with the suit? And no umbrella. Are you gonna work here? Mm -hmm. He's got a long road ahead of him too, but seems like he's on a good one. Did you say customer service? What should I do when a customer comes around? What was your last job? Uh, if people showed up, mommy's basement. Professionally. Them with my umbrella. What the hell, dude? I feel like there are customers for that in this business too. Think you could show them the ropes? At least it's not paid in more than seeds now. At least. A pleasure to work with you too. Get out of here and go to Subomi's house. That's what you should do. The tea? I, I'm sorry, I've never made that before. We are so screwed. I'll figure it out. Give me an after credit scene. Give me an after credit scene. <laughs> One thing that really hurts me about this that I haven't really felt that much in shows is that the premise and the characters and the setting and everything is just so amazing. It's so rich. This show could be 50 seasons, in my opinion. There's just so much that you can do with a character like Mob growing up as an adolescent, you know? And I want to see all of it, but from my understanding, there's not a whole lot of material for it. I think that there's going to be season three and that if appears to be it. And in fact, I was reading that season three will not have even that much manga material to draw on since I believe there aren't that many chapters left. It's such a great show. It's a tragedy, not for what it is, but for what it could have been. And by that, I mean that it I want more. That's basically what I mean. For such a relatively short show, I feel like it captures some really important things really concretely and beautifully. Mob is just the most beautiful boy, the most beautiful soul. I want to be like Mob myself, despite being much older than him. He is just good. Just really good. There's so many great things in here, it's hard to know even where to begin. I guess I'll start on a personal note. I started watching the series in what I would say is sort of a dark time, one of the darkest times I've experienced in my life in quite a while. It's challenged a lot of my values, you know, I think. There's a line that's difficult to identify. A lot of positive positive values are sort of there as a facade, you know, they're a facade to soothe one's soul, to explain away the things we want but haven't yet realized. Almost a sour grapes type of thing. We identify things that we think will bring meaning or value to our lives and we over fixate on them. We deceive ourselves into thinking that the achievement of these things will be some sort of final solution, you know, and add a conclusive narrative to who we are and who we want to be. Yet, because it's painful to look that in the face, maybe to get a sense of our own powerlessness towards that goal and consciously or unconsciously wanting to avoid the actually more difficult work of finding out what it is that that obsession actually reflects about one's own outlook and one's own fears and the defenses one has built up around trauma, perhaps. It's a different thing entirely to have that value permeate your soul, which is why I think it's such a great move. In hindsight, having Mob already have the power, that makes it all the more convincing that it's not that. And he's aware of that and that's part of his genius. For me, there's something this year that hit upon something that I've been covering up for a long time and it's buried and hard to get to. And I think my instinct has been to gravitate towards the obvious source of that and to desire things like power and having control over the elements of my life that were causing me pain when really that's impossible. And also I think would not be gratifying. And also I found myself sort of sacrificing things that I really do think are of value, things I like about myself for the attainment of that thing because it became all consuming. And so spending time with Mob and his host of wonderful friends has given me a lot of strength in that regard. As I've said in many reaction series, I think that a lot of the most satisfying and I think meaningful elements of these 
superhero stories are the internal battles. A lot of the fights and powers and things like that stand in for what in real life would be the things in life that expose weaknesses and how one confronts them. And the qualities with which Mob approaches them are truth in both his desire to really understand and have compassion and also in his speech, you know, as this timid kid who is not afraid when it counts to say what's on his mind through his relationships with others as well, which actually I think is a reflection of that very thing. You know, his relationships with others are partly strong because it's a relationship with himself. It's not seeing himself as any different from other people, not seeing himself as above anyone or realizing that he himself has the same darkness he's seeing. And for the record, I don't think any of the things that the characters cling to in the show are bad. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to be more powerful. I don't think there's anything wrong with striving to be the best in a particular way or even taking enjoyment in that thing. I just think it depends on how you approach it and how you use it and what's underneath. And that's part of the significance of the final battle too, is that Mob also is unleashing his powers, but ultimately he ends up using it not for something of direct and maybe selfish benefit to him, but for the sake of other people. Unlike the boss who's seeking to fill that emptiness in his heart with something like domination. Mob also reaches that point, a lot of heroes reach, where he's so strong in himself, he actually can give. You know, like self-sacrifice is a really tricky thing. Self-sacrifice also has its traps. It has to be done perfectly or not at all, I feel. Speaking of how internalized values are, right? And there's a sort of self-sacrifice that is detrimental. The kind that comes with expectation or is for a reward or is to create image, right? Mob is not that. Mob is giving because in his heart, that is the best thing he could possibly be doing and is the most connected to his vision of himself and what is good. I think a recurring theme among a lot of the characters that sort of fall into Mob's orbit is in order to get something of higher value, they have to let go of the thing they most value. They have to die a sort of identity death. There are these things propping them up and keeping them going or protecting them from doing more difficult things. They have to let that go and in a sense, start again which is horrifying. You know, it's horrifying for anyone who's tasted darkness or tasted existential fear or dread. People who have felt loneliness or similar depths of despair. To do what Mob is asking or to do what Mob creates, it requires willingly going back into that. And that takes strength. Mob sort of seems to live in that state. He lives in that state of being able to suffer the dread of uncertainty about who he is and his future and his capability. To suffer the dread of being nothing. And he's rewarded by being everything. A life that is immensely valuable to him. I'm going to be thinking about the show for quite some time, I think. I am going to do a Q&A, so that'll give a little bit of room to think about about it and talk a little bit more in depth about some of these things. But it's been a great ride. I'm really glad the show finally won. It's been on my radar for a long time. It did not disappoint. It exceeded my expectations. It also stands out as being unique. You know, it has a very distinct style, very distinct feel. Humor is great. Characters are unforgettable. I'm going to be thinking about salt for the rest of my life. I'm never going to underestimate its power again. I want to thank everyone who has followed the journey, the mob journey. It's been a special one. Thank you, of course, as always, to my patrons for the support, for making these videos possible. And thank you to everyone for watching. As always, I love you guys, and I will see you very soon for the Q&A and then for the next series, I hope.